Hello, uh, my name is Darren Barrington Light, and I am going to take you through what's new in feature release 7.2.8 of Bomo Scientific Chameleon CDS. So, yeah, we'll start with a quick introduction and then we'll get into the new features. So, yeah, I'm sure you're already familiar with uh, Chameleon CDS, the gold standard CDS from Thermo Fisher Scientific, and as we all know, it's the most modern CDS platform available today. It's designed to provide intelligent functionality while maintaining the rules of operational simplicity. So what intelligent functionality means is that the software contains smart features that enable you to do all the things you need to do, while operational simplicity is a core design principle that we apply to every feature that we add. Um, and there's three rules that are used here. And the three rules are minimize the number of steps needed to perform any task, make all steps easy to understand and easy to use, and to minimize the time needed to perform any task. So by adhering to these rules, we can make sure everything's fast, it's intuitive, and, and really deliver ease of use. And Korean 7.2, that was the first CDS that combined separation, so GCI, CLC, and mass spectrometry in an enterprise client-server environment. By extending Corinium beyond chromatography into MS, you can now streamline your chromatography and MS quantitation workflows within a single software package. The MS support is focused on routine and quantitative workflows, which gives our LCGC and ICMS users access to the existing rich quantitative data processing and automation capabilities of Chromelian. Now, Chromelian is the software that made multi-vendor instrument control a must-have for any CDS. It was pioneered by us, by us and it still sets the standard for third-party instrument control, supporting over 525 different modules from 20 different manufacturers. Our unique E-workflow procedures help you streamline your laboratory workflows. These provide a framework for quickly creating sequences that meet your SOP requirements, ensuring the correct methods and reports are used and the sequence is structured properly. If you want to learn more about this, you can look on our Chromelian Resource Center, which can be found at thermofisher.com forward slash Chromelian. Finally, a comprehensive suite of tools are provided to ensure full regulatory compliance, which of course now will be applied to your MS data too. So before we get into the content of the latest research, I'm just going to quickly recap uh, the, the recent changes we've had in our Chromelian release strategy, in case you're not already aware of it. So the Chromelian release strategy now, we have two key uh, branches or streams. So we have a feature release branch and a long-term support branch. So the feature releases is focused on features. It's first focused on uh, releasing new features and new instruments quick and fast into the, uh, into the, uh, into the customer base. So we have a new Chromelian release strategy that's been around for a little while now, um, which is essentially based on two streams. So we have a feature release stream and a long-term support re release stream. So the feature release is focused on features. It's aimed at our workstation customers, non-regulated customers who can upgrade and move quickly, even regulated customers who are new, who want to pick up the latest version of Chromelian when they first install Chromelian, um, are very welcome to uh, use this, um, this version, this stream. I think it gives you the latest uh, features, you know, and also the latest instruments will be all there. It's, it, the release cycle is about six to nine months, approximately. Um, and you can say it, it gives you the latest and greatest and it keeps you up to date with, with allows us to release quickly all the new features um, that, we're do, that we're developing and working on. The long term support release is now more stable. It's aimed at our enterprise customers who really want their uh, their software product to stay stable and not change over time. They also need quick issue resolution. So yeah, we release uh, you know regular maintenance updates that, that address these these bugs and issues. Maybe as new instrument drivers, but certainly no new features. So giving those uh, you know easy to validate, quick small packages that can be updated onto the system. And the long-term support release cycle is, is roughly set every two to three years, which is in synchronization with our, our feature release, our major version releases. Um, and, and that's the, the cadence for those ones. So yeah, so there's two branches now. There's a, the feature release branch and the long-term support release branch. So yeah, this is the feature release uh, 7.2.8, which was released in April 2018. It contains several uh, resolved issues. Um, and if you want to know what those details are about those released issues or any more details about the things we're going to talk about today, then please you know, get hold of a copy of the release notes, which has everything inside there. OK, so what is new in Chromelian CDS 7.2.8? Well, we'll look at the uh, what's new on the instrument side and the updated instrument drivers, and then we can look at some of the new features. 
Okay, so what's new? Well, the first instrument is the uh, Thermoscientific Vanquish Duo AU HPLC system. This is um, essentially a dual gradient pump with a dual auto sampler, um, allowing you to um, run multiple new technologies such as a dual LC, so two um, HPLCs in one stack, um, with completely separate flow paths. Uh, and, you know, so other neat things like um, inverse gradients and um, tandem uh, operation, which we shall get to later on in the presentation. We've also added a new uh, Vanquish diode array detector for the flex range. Uh, there's a new two new mass spectrometers, the ISQ7000 single quadrupole and the TSQ9000 triple quadrupole, which are GC mass spectrometers. And we've also added a new driver for the Teledyne ASX280 fraction collector. We have updated drivers, so there's an updated driver for the uh, ISQ EC single quadrupole, which was released with 7.2.6. And there's multiple enhancements here, so um, it's now possible to acquire MS data in the profile mode. The instrument method editor now includes an option to automatically create temporary channels, which can then be used as inputs for fraction collection, so mass directed fraction collection. It now supports the smart startup suite, which is smart startup, smart standby and smart shutdown. The instrument method script now supports the assignment of injection and sequence custom variables for method settings. So you can do that um, so, so you can uh, bring in uh, variables from outside of the actual method itself. It's now possible to exchange information via the Windows clipboard between the instrument method uh, and the scan table and the processing method component table. So you can copy and paste those. And when you work in the real time scan window, the user can copy the scan settings from that window and paste it in the, into the actual um, instrument method as well. Yeah, so the, uh, the instrument, the Vanquish DR Diode Array, that's been upgraded, updated to include a wellness device in line with the other Vanquish modules. The Thermoscientific Trace 1300 GC has a new retention alignment tool, which has been included to uh, on the inlet tab of the instrument method. This tool compensates for changing column conditions by adjusting the flow or pressure of the method to maintain the same retention time for components. For the Agilent 6890 GC, timed events of the valves are now, are now entered in a table on a dedicated instrument method tab and are sent to the instrument at the start of the run. This results in better accuracy of timed methods as compared to defining the valve events in the method script. The Agilent 6850 now supports using the 7693 auto sampler and also includes the same valve events management uh, improvements as the Agilent 6890 driver. There's also the uh, Agilent Chromelian LC driver has been updated to 1.1 update 1, which has been delivered and supplied by Agilent, which uh, essentially fixes some issues that were in there. And also, similarly, the dri Waters driver pack 2017 release 2 supplied by Waters is also now installed and supported. For all information on the changes in these packages, you can find the release notes on the Queen72.8.disc or you can ask your local sales representative. Okay, Vanquish Duo. So this is the new system that's been out and there are some really nice new features added for specifically for this system. And the first one is the fluidic connections and that's now, because of the, um, the Duo system, it allows for more complex fluidic setups involving multiple flows and valves and columns. So what we do now, we have a, a fluidic configuration uh, wizard that supports you in um, describing the fluidic configuration of the system. It allows the drivers to query the flow between components, considering the valve positions and pump flows, and it allows you to select a specific capillary kit, which you may have purchased from us, um, for a particular workflow, and then sets this up for you automatically or you can import a custom file that you've already created previously. So the actual fluidic configuration describes the fluidics of the system, including capillary volumes, flow cell volumes, preheated volumes, and you can even have the column volumes in there, so you can read that in if you're doing the inverse gradient workflow. It'll read in the column dimensions, and it'll also then calculate out a minimum purge time for you um, based on the fluidics that you have. So yeah, then the, the options essentially that the, the, uh, the kind of applications that you can have are, are called dual LC, tandem LC, and inverse gradient, which we'll look at right now. So dual LC essentially allows you to run two completely separate flow paths in one stack of the system, obviously massively increasing your, your throughput on the system, but they can be, I say, completely separate applications um, where you're just running these in, in parallel. The tandem LC um, essentially is 
taking your gradient method and running the reconditioning offline. So you're reconditioning uh, your column offline and saving that portion of your gradient, saving that time um, compared to a single channel L6. So you're running the same application. You can switch between applications, but you'll be running the same application, um, but just removing that reconditioning part of the gradient uh, into to save that time. The third application is inverse gradient. This is specifically uh, aimed for use with our charged aerosol detectors to actually give you um, a gradient, an inverse gradient to give you a neutral um, gradient at the actual detector, improving detection um, and in essentially giving the, the most stability possible to the actual CAD detector. So some other new uh, features that have been added. Um, around chromatography. So yeah, the COVID detection algorithm now has a new detection parameter called fixed baseline. This parameter allows you to force a straight baseline between two data points in the chromatogram. And a new pair of detection parameters, fixed baseline start and fixed baseline end, define the straight baseline via their corresponding retention time values. All peaks which are detected automatically between these start and end points, or which are inserted manually later, are evaluated in respect to the straight baseline, not the original baseline. There's a simplified overlay of chromatograms in query results. So when you run an injection query and get hits from different sequences with different channels, the selection of the chromatograms in the studio session has been improved because previously the versions of the channel that was selected in the navigation area of the studio was used for all injections in the query. So if you were running with UV Viz 1, but the result of your query pulled in a, a result that was from a, a GC, or an IC system, or not even UV Viz 1, maybe just UV Viz 2, then you would get a, a, a channel is not an available message in the chromatogram plot area. So what this now does, it uses, what happens now is we use the default channel of the corresponding sequence um, when making um, the actual chromatogram uh, overlays. So it's easy to compare the two, two chromatograms from uh, different sequences with different channels. There's a new way for pinning and unpinning chromatograms in the chromatography studio. Uh, the chromatogram plot is now extended to allow the pinning of single chromatograms. Previously, you could only pin injections and channels separately because if an injection was pinned, then a different channel selection was made, the chromatogram would change to the newly selected channel. With version 728, the chromatogram plot now allows you to pin single chromatograms, essentially remembering the combination of injection and channel. So this both uh, the pin and unpin operation can only be executed via the context menu in the title bar of the chromatogram plot area. And then the pinned injections are marked with a red pin icon on the left side of the title bar. Now selecting a different channel or injection does not remove or change this chromatogram. It's kept in the chromatogram plot window and overlaid with other selected chromatograms until it's explicitly unpinned. Another new feature is the ability to adjust the expected retention times of one or more multiple components in the processing method by a fixed amount or fixed percentage. There are also several new features for MS. The tentatively identified peaks pane has been enhanced to generate peak results for any acquisition channel, not just the tick. To display compound cast number when available from the library. To allow entry of a compound cast number when available from a library and to also uh, transfer a tentatively identified peak to the component table of the method via a right, right mouse click. The MS components pane now includes an option to plot the quantitation and confirming iron plots of the internal standard of a component, as well as the quantitation and confirming iron plots of the component itself. This is useful in applications that are, use isotope dilution, such as direction analysis, where it's important to be able to visually compare the retention time alignment. You can now assign an internal standard to another internal standard as a syringe standard in order to compute the percentage recovery of the internal standard. And when performing calibration related calculations, it's now possible to add the area of the confirming iron traces to that of the quantitation iron trace to create the calibration plot. There've also been a number of new and improved features specifically for the ICS 6000. So the Dynex ICS 6000 HPIC system. In the consumables inventory, there have been several improvements. So there's now a progress bar to indicate how much time is left for an ongoing tag, read or write. And there are two new table columns. The first, write, last write shows the time when the tag information was last updated. And the second, status, indicates a read, write or read or write error. 
There's also improvements in the error messages for tag read write operations in the product part and serial numbers are now included to simplify identification of the affected consumable. Finally, a DRS 600 installation guide has also been added to the consumables inventory. Other enhancements for control of the ICS 6000 have been made in a number of areas in instrument configuration, creation of the instrument method, handling of the consumables inventory and smart startup, smart standby and smart shutdown are now supported. Korean 728 has been tested and validated on Windows 2016 server operating system. It also introduces some new policies to enhance compliance. Global policies to prevent org unit administrators deleting or renaming users has been added. Also, a new policy preventing the reuse of a username is now available. This ensures that usernames cannot be reused, even if the username has been assigned and then renamed and deleted. This guarantees that all usernames will be unique for the entire lifetime of the software. 728 also introduces the ability to clone access groups and roles, making it easier to create a new role or access group that only differs in a few options from the existing one. Another improvement is automated results export to an external application such as Demo Fisher Sample Manager Looms. Chromedian system administrators can now integrate this export as an automated step in the electronic signature workflow. The new configuration option in the electronic signature policy allows the export to be triggered either when the sequence is submitted, reviewed, or approved. Korean 728 also introduces a completely new station installation qualification. The Station IQ tool has been rewritten from the ground up to support extensibility and enhanced checking in an easy to read format. The Station IQ now checks Windows firewall rules or when a third party firewall is used, it shows a recommendation to check the third party firewall rules. The reference for data for the IQ is now digitally signed to prevent manipulation and the station IQ now records system and user locale settings such as the number and date format. On the IQ report, a summary of any errors and warnings is now shown at the top of the report and these entries are linked to the corresponding section of the report containing further details. It also adds a packages section where it reports on the version of packages which are installed with Chromium such as Microsoft components, mass spectrometry components and third party drivers. It also checks that the expected versions of these is installed. Finally, there are several improvements to the post sequence reporting options. Before Chromium 7.2.8, in order to automatically generate a report at the end of an injection or sequence, the user would have to go to set up the options in the instrument queue tab and leave the Chromium client open until all reports have been printed or produced. This release introduces a number of improvements in this area. So you no longer need to go to the instrument queue to set up reporting and reporting is performed even with the Chromium client closed. Post injection of post sequence report options are now defined in the sequence. That means that these can be predefined in the knee workflow. They can be selected in the sequence before acquisition starts or they can be edited in the sequence while it's running. System administrators can also enforce reporting options in the instrument configuration application on the queue settings tab of the instrument properties. These options will then be applied to all sequences applied acquired on that instrument. So Chromium 7.2.8 adds several new and updated instrument drivers, has a nice lot of uh, features around the Vanquish Duo UHPLC and the Dynex IC system to really improve the, uh, and add functionality for those. It also has some very nicely uh, new features around data processing and reporting. And together they really do reinforce Chromium Software's position as the gold standard CDS and the only CDS to deliver both separation and MS in the enterprise environment. Finally, uh, if you want more information on, on what I've talked about or on Chromium in general, please go to our website and at thefermofisher.com forward slash Chromium, where you can download an app or order an on a CD with over 70 videos on the various features of Chromium. You can also, uh, if you're on Facebook, our Charlie, mascot Charlie has his own Facebook page where you can connect and uh, we can follow his adventures as he travels around the world. If you're on Facebook, I'd encourage you to connect here because we do post events and tips and tricks there. So thank you for listening and goodbye for now.